Amen. This is part three. Amen. The other side of God. Amen. And we're going to be dealing with the cataclysmic wrath. The other side of God. Cataclysmic wrath. Amen. Just to give you a brief synopsis of those that wasn't here. Amen. The first part was the wrath of abandonment that came out of Romans chapter 1. Amen. The wrath of the abandonment. The Bible said that he gave some over. Amen. To a reprobate or a debased mind. The wrath of abandonment. Then in part 2 we dealt with the sowing and reaping. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 right around verses 5 through 7 where we expounded upon the sowing and the reaping. Amen. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not duped. Amen. Well, so the man soweth that shall he also reap. In other words, you can bank on that. Amen. We know if you sow love, you'll receive love. If you sow kindness, you receive kindness. If you sow seed, Amen. You will reap, amen, what that would you sow. Amen. amen. We looked at the sowing reaping in the Bible say of the flesh. If you sow it to the flesh, of the flesh you will reap corruption. Amen. If you sow it to the spirit, of the spirit you will reap life. Amen. Then we are also now here with the cataclysmic wrath. Amen. I was inspired just talking with another brother. Amen. And it really inspired me. It just came out of a conversation some while ago. Amen. And he was and he and he said the other he said, what about the other side of God, preacher? And I said, yes, we love to talk about the, the love side, the kindness, the compassion, the healing, the way making, the God that fixes things and, and preserves things. But what about the other side? Because God does have another side, whether you want to address it or not, whether you want to deal with it or not, but there is another side. And he just uh, blessed me, amen, with the mental fortitude to really deal with this other side. And today we're going to be dealing with the cataclysmic side, amen, cataclysmic, cataclysms, amen. What is cataclysm? Cataclysms is things that happen, amen, that man really has no control over. Like COVID-19, that could be considered as a cataclysm to a degree of widespread, amen, of virus, amen, just ravaging lives, amen. We, we look at the SARS virus, amen, that, they call it pandemic, but it could be a cataclysm because it causes massive casualties, amen. Also, you look at the HIV virus, amen, that came out, amen, in the, the late 80s, early 90s when they really hit a man mainstream of America and then we look at the swine flu that came through not too long ago and, and claimed many lives and we can look at a man the Ebola virus a man that came through and, and, and killed a lot of people in, in different parts of the world especially on the continent of Africa so we can look at all these cataclysmic ways that God worked. We can look at Hurricane Katrina. That's a form of cataclysm. That's a form of a storm coming in the form of a hurricane coming in and causing so many people to have their houses flooded and houses torn asunder and, and causing power outages and many things to happen and, and thousands and thousands of people being without homes and without food and shelter. We, that's what we call cataclysmic storms. These are storms that we have no control of, period. And I'm so glad that we as people cannot control weather. Because if we could control weather, then everything in the earth would be off balance. The food wouldn't grow properly if we decide when it's going to rain, or we decide what side of the earth is going to be hot on, or what side is going to be cold on. Aren't you glad that God got everything in a balance? He know how to rain to fall. And even if we had three days of rain, we can rest assured. Yes, Amen. That we ain't going to be flooded out. That we're going to be consumed by water. How do you know that? Because in Genesis, what did he do? He said, I'm going to seal my covenant, my promise, with what? A rainbow. Yeah. 
See, some folk, they talk about the rainbow, but they don't understand why the rainbow is in the sky. And every now and then, you'll see the, the symbol of the rainbow yeah, right. that just appears in the sky. Woo! Man don't understand how it appears, but we know a God that does. Yeah. His name Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Mekonos. He's, he's El Shaddai. He's the Almighty God. He's the Adonai. He's the Lord. He's the Elohim. He's powerful. And come on, somebody. He's, Je he's Jehovah Shalom. He's the Lord of Peace. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's my Lord that provides. He's Jehovah Nisi. He is my protector. He's my banner. We know his name. We don't recall him a man upstairs. Because he's not upstairs. Well, the man up above. We don't call him a man up above. We call him by his name. And we know who's in control of all things. We acknowledge who's in control. Why the weatherman trying to figure it out and why scientists trying to figure it out and all these experts trying to figure out. We know who's in control. We know who's in control. If you go back to Genesis chapter 10, let me take my time. If you go to Genesis chapter 10 and, and, and through 19, from 10, I'm sorry, from 8 to 10, you'll see when the plagues came on Egypt. The 10 plagues. And the last plague was the plague of the firstborns. You would have thought the blood did it. You would have thought the lice did it. You would have thought the frogs did it. You would have thought the darkness did it. But then when the firstborn of everything died, that's when Pharaoh said, all right, it's time for y'all to go. Was it something that they conjured up? No, God sent it. God sent it. He sent them plagues. Why? To show Pharaoh, who really hold supreme power. Yeah. God said, I make them sick and I cause them to move amongst those that are sick. Because the Bible said, even when they sent fiery serpents amongst the people in numbers, if you go back and look at the text, everybody didn't get bit by the serpent, but those that got bit, the Bible said that Moses told Moses to erect a brazen serpent and everybody that would look at the brazen serpent would be healed. Yeah. God said it. Who said it? God said it. So don't think just because it's this, this virus that so many people are afraid of and, and they want to put it on Wuhan, China and they want to put it on this one and put it over here and put it over here and I even had heard one new person was talking some months ago they couldn't figure out why it wasn't attacking uh, the continent of, of Africa the way it's ravaging Europe and other places and, and, and I said well, well number one I'm saying to myself is how are we going over there to find out what they're doing uh, that's what I would be doing. I would be on the TV talking about why. I'd be on the plane over there to figure out why. Uh huh. Evidently, it's something they are doing that you're not doing. And some things that that are, are, are herbal remedy that can still work in this day and age. There are certain medicines. Come on, saints of God. There are certain medicines that some of y'all grew up that are older than I am. And your mama told you to put it on the back of all the bee sting and told you to put an onion under your foot and told you to, to, to drink a little castor oil or drink a little cotton liver oil or drink this or drink that yeah, and, and you were stinking you smelled bad but you felt better after a while yes so preacher doing work yes it still works it's just like exercise I can't exercise it's not going to show up on you but if you exercise and you put forth some effort and you do some things that you need to do, then you, your body will become more healthier. Then your body will line up on the subjection of the health perspective. But there's things that we must do that sometimes that we're not doing that is something that we have to start doing. You can't wait till flu season to start building your immune system. You can't wait the cold season before you check the heater in the AC vents. You can't wait till the summer before you buy water. You can't wait the hurricane season to have batteries. No, you have to be prepared beforehand. It's not just about being prepared now. It's 
stuff are being prepared beforehand. Why do you think we are believers? Why? Because we want to be prepared beforehand. We don't want to take the chance like some people do and just say, I'm just going to wander around until I think it's time for me to find Jesus. No, because you may die in that state. And hell will be your home. Because there won't be no unbelievers in heaven. Period. Well, who is an unbeliever? The one that don't bear the fruit. It's just that simple. The tree is known by what? The fruit it bears. So if your life is the opposite of what, what, what Christ said and what God's word uh, said, then therefore you're part of the unbelievers. But here in the text, I want to read these few texts. Hey, Amen. I got 1234 here. Number 16. Number 16. And it says this. I want to read these. Hey, Amen. I might try to read it fast. I have seven points of scripture. And as you listen, and amen, thank God for my daughter, amen, because a lot of these messages now we're able to have on CD as well as DVD. So if you get with her or let her know, amen, if you want the complete series, amen, get with her and uh, we will get that to you as soon as we can, amen. Again, our media ministry is doing well. We get ready to um, uh, launch our Christ Open Door Community Church YouTube channel, and again, you may not be on YouTube as much as somebody else, but these tools are not just for you. These tools are for you to share with someone else that may be contemplating come to church or may need some up uh, lifting words or something that they can't even come, but yet still you can take it to them. It's just like a, a plate of food. Amen. When you're cooking, sometimes they can't make it, but you can stop by in your car and drop the food off. So, so sometimes we have to take the word of God to people. We can't always wait for them to dock the door. Amen. Sometimes we got to take it to them. That's what the scripture tells us to do in Matthew. He said, go eat therefore. So we have to understand that is something that we must do. Number 1628 says this. And I'm reading out the, the New King James. I got one version here today. Amen. For the sake of time. And Moses said, by this you shall know that the Lord God has sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them of my own will. If these men die natural like men, like all men, or they are visited by common faith of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if God.